might call this uh, Village of Green Hills regular council meeting for March 26, 2019 um, to order. Uh, clerk call the roll. Mr. Dries. Here. Mr. Halter. Here. Mrs. Hermes. Here. Mr. Lee. Here. Mrs. Metz. Here. Mrs. Walter. Here. Mayor Mark. Here. Okay, we have a prayer. Okay. okay. All right. Lord, we ask you to send your spirit of servanthood upon all of us gathered here this evening to do your work for the benefit of all in our community. We ask you to bless our elected and appointed officials so they may deliberate with wisdom and act with courage. Bless the members of our community who come here to speak before council so they state their cause with honesty and humility. Lord, we ask you to bless us all, that everything we do here tonight will move you to welcome us one day into your kingdom as good and faithful servants. We ask this in the name of our brother Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have the minutes of the February 26th regular council meeting and March 9th council retreat. Does anybody have any corrections? Under the call to order on February 26th, it does not list that law director Jeff Wolves was here, and I believe he was, as he did have a report. Okay. Will the acting clerk make note of that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> With that correction, right. I move that we adopt the, the minutes. Yeah, the minutes are approved. Um, okay, yeah, and I issued a proclamation at a request from... Uh, uh, autism, uh, National Autism uh, Group, and uh, so this will be posted, uh, and uh, it uh, uh, pro pro proclaims April 2019 as World Autism Day, and April the 2nd, 2019 as World Autism Awareness Day in the Village of Green Hills to increase understanding and acceptance of people with autism specter disorder. That'll be posted and online in the village. Okay. This time, this is the time for citizens to comment on matters before council. When recognized, please come forward to the lectern, give your name and address, and then state your comments or questions. This is not intended to be a dialogue with council or village staff. If you have questions, the questions will be recorded and referred to the manager's office for a response. This will allow time for a thorough thoughtful and thorough consideration to be given to each question. Council meetings are recorded for ease of transcription. Comments are limited to three minutes. No? Okay. All right. Reports of village officials. Municipal manager acting uh, Chief Furlow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm here at the, uh, on behalf of Yvonne Kovac, our manager, who is uh, currently out of state tonight. Uh, Yvonne gave me a number of items and then uh, some that have transpired uh, during her absence. Uh, the first was a report that she provided uh, from a question that arose at the January 22nd council meeting where a resident asked the village to alert residents of new legislation pertaining to wireless network issues and for an article to go on the manager's blog about wireless network health concerns and the village to hold a public hearing on this issue. In response, our council and our solicitor have been clearly stating that this is a very large issue controlled by other levels of government, such as the Federal Communications Commission and others. And local governments have rapidly lost the ability to regulate most aspects of the communication industry. And at council meetings, our law director provides council with legislative issues as they arise, and certainly residents can learn about them from watching or attending our council meetings. There are literally hundreds of issues of importance to our citizens, and the manager does not feel that it's the appropriate forum for taking on many of these. Uh, she encourages this resident to work with our federal representatives and our U.S. representative, state representative, and state senator, and most certainly the FCC uh, regarding those concerns. The second was an item from last council meeting. Uh, we had a resident that asked for a copy of our current walking path map. Uh, we plan some updates and those will include some additional walking routes and more data on the flip side. 
uh, and the resident was provided with this map and also for anyone that is interested we have those available currently in our lobby downstairs also at the February meeting the <coughs> resident inquired about where uh, the person could find codes pertaining to property and if the village had a long-range plan and lastly how the shopping center fits into the village plans and what would the village do if the owner goes under Regarding the first item, all village codes are online on our website, which is www.greenhillsohio.us, and all you need to do is search for codified ordinances. The village has also adopted the International Property Maintenance Code, which is online under the Building and Zoning Department of the same website. Secondly, the village does have a comprehensive plan that is online, again, on our website under the government menu. Lastly, the shopping center issue is not in uh, the manager's opinion for her to comment on the shopping center is of paramount importance to all of us in the village and we feel confident that council will always take the appropriate actions and act accordingly the next to the last was a concern that was raised as to why golf membership applications were not mailed out like the pool applications why wasn't the january coupon good on the golf course and lastly did the village support the Gators? Did the village know about the upcoming championships? Regarding the first item, golf membership applications were postmarked on January 31st of this year. None have been returned as undeliverable, and two memberships from that mailing have already been paid. The coupon from January was good for both the golf course and the pool, and a copy of that ad was forwarded to the resident. Regarding the Gators, last year the village learned that the championships were coming up in July. We will be working closely with them to ensure that it is a great success for them and for the village as well. We support the Gators in many ways, and for example, by allowing them to have practices and competitions at the pool. The last uh, concern from a resident was actually not at the council meeting, but was posted on Next Door Green Hills. A uh, resident uh, was concerned about blocking the sidewalks and having to walk in the street to get around the car. A uh, resident noted, I realize people have more than one, but it's mainly people with single cars that I noticed that are doing it. And we have a direction from the manager as well as police policy. And I thought it might be a good idea to go over that so any resident that is listening knows. And we tried to use a, an aspect of common sense to approach this problem. Uh, the manager wrote, as long as pedestrians can get around the cars without stepping into the street, we will not enforce this. The driveways and garages were constructed in a time where everyone didn't have two or three vehicles. We are trying to be reasonable about the on-street parking at a premium. Now the direction that we've given our police officers on this uh, is as long as pedestrians can get around the vehicle, as the manager mentioned, without stepping into the street, we do not issue a citation. If the pedestrian must step into the street, we have the officer make an attempt to locate the vehicle's owner and have the vehicle moved. If the owner does not comply or cannot be located, we do issue a citation. Vehicles will not be cited for blocking a driveway without a complaint. Residents are permitted to block their own driveway temporarily or allow it to be blocked by a guest. Enforcement action will be taken when a complaint is received and a resident's driveway is blocked without his or her permission. Her permission I'm sorry. <clears throat> The next segment that I had was just uh, some information for council on the four resolutions that are before you tonight. Uh, the first is a resolution making supplemental appropriations and transfers, and I just wanted to explain briefly what those four were about. The first is a general fund transfer uh, uh, to planning, and that just entails our portions of permit from the school construction, and so that's why it's being requested to be allocated as such. Uh, the 14000 uh, from the Capital Projects Fund uh, was just sitting there dormant and it is being asked to be reallocated so it's available for future expenses and none of those have been earmarked <coughs> as of yet, they'll just be available. In Section 2 of that resolution, there is a transfer of 99000 from the General Fund to the Police Fund. That is a routine transfer that our Finance Director tells me so that all funds uh, for police expenses are in one place. There's no additional funding that wasn't in the budget originally. And the last is an $85,000 transfer from the general fund to the swimming pool account, and that is just for a swim safe invoice for this year. Um, 
the next resolution uh, has to do with uh, the police mutual aid agreement. And I just wanted to let you know the only changes in that very lengthy document are the removal of several defunct agencies that no longer uh, are parties to the mutual aid agreement. And Hamilton County, through the Hamilton County Police Association, now has a mobile field force team, uh, and that language has been incorporated. And that uh, those proposed revisions were already sent to our law director uh, last month, and he has no objections as to the language of the form. The next uh, resolution has to do with mayor's court rules. Uh, we've actually worked on a suggestion that came from our court clerk to uh, try and reduce costs and uh, take a look at whether or not we really needed to have mayor's court uh, every two weeks. We concluded we probably don't. We looked at having it once a month. But there are some constitutional provisions as well as Ohio Revised Code uh, that requires uh, every defendant to have access to a speedy trial. And the Revised Code sets that limit at 30 days. So with input from uh, the mayor and from our magistrate and from the prosecutor, uh, we have determined that every three weeks will work. So we're going to uh, uh, set a calendar of having mayor's court every three weeks on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Uh, there may be a modification for holidays here and there, but uh, that's, that will be the general schedule. It's of interest to note that this will reduce the number of mayor's court sessions from 24 to 17, and that results in a cost savings to the municipality. Costs are incurred primarily in paying the contractual fees for the magistrate and the prosecutor, and annually the previous schedule carried a cost of $11,400 annually. The new schedule incurs expenses of 8000 950, which is an annual savings of $2,450. There will also be some additional savings on overtime for the court clerk, as well as for court time for the police officers that are called to testify. And then the last resolution is just a uh, routine notice given to uh, property owners regarding the removal of vegetation or debris, uh, and uh, that's processed as an assessment to them. And I want to give you just a little bit of an overview of what we as staff have been working on. Uh, there's a zoning text amendment that will be going shortly to the Planning Commission. Uh, we're finalizing some changes uh, as requested at the retreat to Rule 3 of the Rules of Council. Um, we uh, are working on a radar speed sign that we think will be in within the next few weeks. Uh, and we'll be putting that in various locations uh, throughout the village. And that will also have a backup battery uh, that is being ordered in conjunction with that. We have the upcoming April 13th cleanup with Green Hills Shine. Uh, and uh, the administration has been working on the rental inspection program. Our finance director is developing a new credit card policy and some other financial policy updates. Uh, in the police department, we are ready for our annual online uh, annual assessment through CALEA, the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies, and the Service Department is completing uh, leaf collection and hope to have that all wrapped up by the first two weeks in April. Lastly, I'm sure that uh, our Law Director may touch on this, and I think it was in his, uh, included already in his report, but there is a bill pending before the legislature eliminating sovereign immunity. Uh, it's up for his third hearing and opponent testimony, which I think just occurred. Um, it will virtually eliminate all sovereign immunity for police, fire, and emergency vehicles of political subdivisions. Uh, it will allow immunity protections only in police pursuits when a person is fleeing from the commission of a criminal offense, eliminating all other sovereign immunity protections for any other safety service emergency runs. The Ohio Municipal League urges jurisdictions to consider passing a resolution opposing this House Bill 27 and uh, then send it on to our legislators. Uh, this will have, in our opinion, a tremendous impact on our community and change, changes would have to be made in responding to public emergencies. Lastly, just uh, uh, Monday we received information from the schools that they are moving into a new phase of construction. This coming week, they're going to be starting soil improvement work that may dis be disruptive to the neighborhoods surrounding our middle school. This type of work creates some noise and vibration, but at levels similar to or less than current construction operations. 
The noise and vibration may be more noticeable as it will be continuous during the daytime and early evening hours. Uh, the work will last approximately two weeks from uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, March 27th to Friday, April 12th, and the time frame is weather dependent. And they anticipate that the work will start at approximately 7 in the morning <coughs> and continue until about 7 at night. And that concludes the manager's report. Okay, and I do have a thing to add to it. The radar sign came in today. And Wonderful. Mike's having batteries charged up. So be exciting. Yeah. Let's see how it works. I think we'll have a few demands for it. Yeah. <laughs> Any comments? Uh, manager slash chief? Um, the sovereign immunity thing is a big deal. Um, do we have any um, suggested language for a resolution from Ohio Municipal League? If, if not, I think we ought to inquire about it. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll double check, but I think in one of the last communications from the Municipal League, it may have had, um, they, they will sometimes prepare like a sample Correct. resolution, okay. and I think there was one in the last communication from them, but we'll, we'll confirm it. Who, whose dumb idea is this? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't mean to be Representative blunt, but Ingram, Democrat from Cincinnati. Yeah, I, I, I will, I, I don't want to um, <laughs> speculate, but... Um, <laughs> This does not have a great shot, I'm going to say. Well, well <laughs> I, would, I would hope not. I think what this really stems from, and Chief, t tell me if, if you uh, disagree, there was an incident in the city of Cincinnati, Cincinnati Fire. a year, or I don't know how long ago it was, where um, they hit a parked car. Yeah. And a fire truck responding on an emergency. I believe so. And they didn't. They hit a parked car, and... The person submitted what they have to submit to the city to say, I want to file a claim because you hit my car that was just parked here on the street. And the city said, well, we don't typically deal with that kind of claim because under the statute, we would have immunity from liability. Um, I'm not saying that was the best way to handle that situation in Cincinnati, but my, my understanding is it was that situation that sparked someone to say, well, then I think we need to go change the immunity statute. But what has been proposed is <laughs> way broad, so way far uh, beyond what would address that type of situation. And in answer to your question, Mr. Dries, uh, the uh, Municipal League does have a contact for us to get sample uh, resolutions, and we'll proceed with getting some That'd of be that great. information. That'd be great. <coughs> Also, you don't want to get hit by a mail truck delivering mail. I understand your insurance has to take care of it. Is that right? I don't know. I don't know I if don't it's know. changed in recent years, but four or five years ago, I knew somebody that got hit by a mail truck, and too bad. Yeah, I, I, don't, I can't speak to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, in, in my prior life, I've handled several of those situations with emergency vehicles being involved in accidents, and I know that that's what has always been the municipality's role is to assist that person and typically their insurance will cover that because of the, the Ohio law. So right. that's how it's been handled in the past normally uh, and annually. Okay, moving on. Um, law director. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you all have my written report. Um, I would like to make one um, update to that uh, in the pending legal matters section. Um, I have a description there about the federal uh, court of appeals case that you are involved in and what you have in front of you is the same report that I gave last time that says no change. Mm -hmm. uh, today we were contacted by your insurance counsel with an update and what we found out is that the court of appeals has dismissed that appellant's request for a rehearing and reconsideration. Um, and so that is a final order. Um, the next possible step would to watch for is to see if this particular appellant, the next step would be to try to go to the United States Supreme Court. Okay. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, but, but that dismissal of that case has now been, is now official. Good. 
And that would, that's my only update, and that's all I have to report. Okay. All right, Acting Clerk of Council. Uh, that's me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to report that resolutions 2019-05F, <coughs> 06F, 07 LNR, and the March community calendar were posted as required. Alright, Chief of Police, Neil Fertel. <laughs> we're switching hats a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were very pleased last month to recognize uh, right here in this chamber uh, one of our own uh, for 50 years in law enforcement service. Uh, Bob Wright is one of those behind the scenes members of our department, but I can't think of a more critical position. I learned a long time ago as a police chief that there's two things that will get you in trouble, vice operations and the property room. And I can tell you that we have only the most top-notch people in those positions. And Bob Wright epitomizes that. He's the kind of guy that uh, if he tells you something, you can take it to the bank. Uh, he has uh, probably forgotten more about the gathering property and evidence than most of us will ever know. Uh, he's been at it since being hired in Mount Healthy in 1968. He went to the city of Forest Park in 1972 where he still works four days a week as their property manager and he works for us one day a week as our property manager. And uh, we're, we're very fortunate to have his skills. Uh, we have pressed him into service. He's board certified nationally as a crime scene investigator and an evidence technician. Um, his uh, abilities to gather both fingerprints and DNA are completely unmatched. Uh, he's been instrumental in solving many crimes through his talents. and. Uh, Every time we hire a new officer, it's mandated that they spend about half a day with Bob Wright to gain as much of his knowledge as they can. So we we're very pleased to be able to recognize him and hope that we have him for many, many more years to come. Uh, we, uh, we worked on a ballistic vest grant. Uh, we uh, fulfilled a request to uh, pay for some of last year's vests. Uh, I was explaining to the safety committee today that we have an opportune uh, situation that we received federal grant money <laughs> for a ballistic vest for half payment and last year the state of Ohio stepped forward uh, to pay for the remainder so we're taking advantage of that we typically replace our vests every five years which is when the warranty expires and uh, we're very pleased that that's not a general fund expense. We have uh, proceeded with some of our equipment updates there was some money that uh, was allocated by council for capital for the police. Uh, we replaced for our patrol officers the last of our older portable radios that have been around for a number of years. Uh, we play, replaced those with brand new Motorola uh, heavy duty police radios. Uh, we only have one older radio that uh, uh, is still on active duty in the police department, not on patrol duty. So we're very pleased to be able to have that latest technology available. Uh, Motorola is phasing out repairs on the older, older radios, so uh, as those diminish and we take them out of service, we're, we have those available as spares when needed. Uh, we also uh, put in an order for two new video cameras to replace the malfunctioning equipment that we had in our cruisers. We had recently, in, in last budget year, purchased two new DVR units uh, for the cruisers. Uh, Lieutenant Ward very skillfully uh, managed to talk to our vendor and uh, they noted that the DVR units were under warranty and they were connected to the cameras so we received the cameras at no charge. So that was a, a nice acquisition. Uh, we're looking at uh, replacing two aging radar units, one which has failed completely uh, and uh, we're also awaiting word on whether or not there's a possible grant from the state uh, for at least one of those units. So. We're holding off on making that purchase until we get a final word from them. Uh, we also uh, purchased four new go bags for each cruiser. We've, uh, Sergeant Luke's our patrol supervisor, organized those uh, bags so that they would hold uh, some medical supplies, tourniquets, other first aid items, uh, so that officers are able to grab those at a scene and quickly aid when needed. We uh, noted the approval of our new pay scales that went into effect on March 11th. Uh, we're very grateful to all of you for uh, deliberating and, uh, and uh, passing that and grateful to the work that the municipal manager did in putting all of that together and especially to our citizens who approved the police levy. Tomorrow morning on the manager's behalf I'll be attending the Hamilton County Mass Care Summit. That's going to be uh, 
at Scarlet Oaks Academy. Um, this is in response to uh, some of the uh, weather events and other events that uh, police and fire typically handle. Uh, so this will bring all of the jurisdictions, actually 49 jurisdictions in Hamilton County together uh, to make sure that our plans are all up to speed and we're all on the same page. Uh, speaking of training, uh, we've been working with our schools and with our adjoining police agency, Springfield Township and Forest Park, in critical incident training. Uh, we also want to make sure we're all on the same page because typically we're all going to respond to each other's jurisdictions if a critical incident occurs. Uh, in conjunction with that, we're also involving the schools and we will be doing in August a, uh, a full scale exercise. We did a, a few tabletop exercises. <clears throat> but we will be doing a full-scale exercise this summer to ensure that we're as prepared as we can be to protect our children and the staff in our schools. Uh, in terms of training, we also are continuing uh, a heavy training schedule for our officers. Officer Means and Officer Ritchie just attended training in Blue Ash on March 21st. Our certification is in Toxalizer 8,000 operators. Officer Tricase and Officer Means will be attending video surveillance techniques for narcotics investigations training at the Cincinnati Police Academy next month. Uh, and Officer Tricase is attending additional drug <coughs> enforcement training bless you, bless you, at a narcotics conference that is coming up in May. For any of those that might be listening, uh, as spring break approaches and uh, planning begins for summer vacations, we urge you to take advantage of our police vacation checks that's something that you can very quickly uh, do on our website at greenhillspd.org uh, or you can just give us a call at 825-2101. We'll be glad to take the information by phone. Uh, that's a really good service for folks that are away to give them a little more peace of mind. Um, we have we've very uh, religiously checked vacation homes. In fact, I had to write to a person last year who was on vacation that when the officer went to try the door to make sure that it was uh, uh, still locked and secure, the door handle came off in his hands. <laughs> and uh, she wrote back and she said, that's okay, I needed to fix that anyway. <laughs> so we do actually go out and, and change those. Uh, the last uh, thing before the statistics is one of those things that make you smile. Uh, if any of you have ever seen Officer Rob Lenhoff, he's on duty tonight. Um, He's been with us about three years now at uh, six foot four. He's, he's a bit of a natural as a basketball player. And he was on patrol uh, earlier this month on a Saturday. And he noticed a uh, youngster that was shooting a basketball on Dayspring Terrace. And he went over and talked with him for a while. And eventually he and the young man named Derek decided they were going to shoot a friendly game of basketball. And you have to give it to uh, Rob for his honesty. He uh, recorded on his log entry that day, he dutifully put down, played a game of basketball with Eric. Derek won 11 to seven. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Derek. In, go. in terms of statistics, during the past month, we investigated seven accidents, uh, two crimes, and 312 other incidents. Of a total of 490 contacts with citizens, 212 of those were dispatched or received by phone and 278 of those were self-initiated by our officers. We provided assistance to the public in 115 instances. We assisted other agencies 37 times, and we made 10 criminal arrests and 67 traffic arrests or citations. That's all I had in there. Okay. Any comments or questions? I did have one question, um, Chief, about the license plate, uh, going to a single license plate. When is that to take place, or has it? It has not. As my understanding is that it may be in danger of even being brought to the oh, floor <laughs> for a vote. Yeah, it, personally, I'm very much against that. Uh, if people recall back in our history, the Oklahoma City bombing suspect was caught because the officer was able to read that plate. There was uh, more recently a uh, television reporter that was murdered uh, on the scene of a report that she was doing a live broadcast in West Virginia. And as the shooter fled from the scene, the officer was able to get his plate from the front. And that's very much a public safety item. Uh, this jurisdiction uses license plate readers, as do most police agencies. And if you want to cut our effectiveness in half, that's a good way to do it. Is there anything that we could do to um, put forth our uh, 
disagreement with that legislation? I'll certainly find out. Do you know, Mr. Forbes, whether where that's at? I, the last I heard, it was in danger of not being brought right. To the that floor. that was the last I heard. Um, I mean, council always has the authority or the ability to adopt a resolution expressing your opinion. It so seems to come up every few years. Yeah. Okay. And I think they have to come to some resolve on the. It's, it's tied in with the gasoline tax bill, and that has to be resolved by the end of the month. I'm not correct. Right. I, I mean, at, yeah. at, at this point, um, you know, the the House has passed their version of that. The Senate has passed its version of that. The governor the administration has their version that they would like and we'll have to see where that all comes out in conference committee to see what that I think Mr. Halder short of a resolution the council could certainly direct the manager to uh, uh, write to our representative and our senator okay. uh, in opposition if council so chooses to pass okay. that tonight well if you could just keep us abreast yep. Yep, we'll cool. follow it all right, Ron, I have one thing that I've forwarded uh, over to the chief and to Yvonne. Um, and I received a, an email from a resident, and she said, Thank you for taking care of the wonderful village of Green Hills. Every time I read an update from the Green Hills police, it brings a smile and sometimes tears at the kindness and dedication of all of our <coughs> officers working on the police force. I love the village of Green Hills and hope that it does not change very much in the future. It's a wonderful place to raise a family. Thanks. So, thanks for it. We don't get many of those, mm -hmm. even though we should. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, mayor's report. Um, in case there's uh, anybody that uh, doesn't know, I do not live in Madeira. <laughs> <laughs> anybody watch Channel 5 News and missed the thing that I was there for grandchildren? Uh, off the school bus and I don't live with my grandchildren so. <laughs> but I've had several people come up to me uh, and ask me when I moved to Madeira <laughs> do not all right and I have uh, mayor's court uh, receipts uh, for the month of February uh, total of $14,422.48 uh, $1,280.50 went to the state uh, $46.50 went to Hamilton County, and 58, wait a minute, that top number doesn't match. So disregard that, it's their ba ending bank balance. Uh, Village of Green Hills got $5,826.50. And that's all I have. All right, uh, committee reports, <coughs> service and streets, Natasha uh, Mills. Can we jump down? So the manager and I had a meeting with uh, Green Hills Shines, Judith uh, Muhlenhard, and talked about ways that we can work together to uh, beautify the village together this coming season. So we've got plans going there. And then our next meeting is April 9th at 9 a.m. Okay. All right. Our community development, Jeff Halder. Yes, uh, it's already been brought up at the Green Hill Shine uh, cleanup event. I did want to mention, I don't, I don't know if it was mentioned, that uh, if you're interested in helping cl clean up Green Hills, uh, April 13th, as mentioned earlier, uh, meet at the gazebo at 10 a.m. Uh, to see if we can spruce things up a bit. Really appreciative of that group um, being, taking the initiative. Uh, and also, uh, Mel and I will get together and put together a calendar for community development um, meetings throughout the rest of the year and get back with you. That concludes my report. Uh, Jeff, when is the sign company going to do the uh, stone work around the, the two primary well, it, right Science. now, my understanding is that um, it might be done. I, originally, uh, Mike was possibly going to do it, and uh, then after some discussion with Mike, it looks like uh, the company, they're going to refer it back to that uh, company. Sounds like they would do a good job at a reasonable price. Um, I don't have an actual date for that. I know that um, they were going to jump on it right away, and I know it was really <coughs> muddy and raining, and I said, let's not make it awful and yeah, you know, I, dig I, I a pit we were, I knew we were delaying that. Yeah, so I, I would think it's a little bit more weather permitting um, that uh, I can get back to you on that. Okay. Thanks. Recreation, cable television, Marie Walter. 
Um, I, I went to the meeting at uh, March 19th for the uh, Waycross. Uh, there was uh, the no news number one or information number one was that um, Nancy Moore reported that the personnel committee has been completed and with their annual review of the executive director and the motion was approved um, to increase the salary of 2.5. Um, she present, she, uh, Burke was presented the staff reports and as, that, uh, as attached to the agenda. He stated that we finished 2018 about 3% ahead in terms of program numbers. Uh, SHIP reported also that they're working on replacing the cameras in the council chambers at Forest Park and at Green Hills. Um, there also the report was uh, on a Supreme Court case of MCAC versus Halleck that could have an impact down the road and the board discussed the FCC and FNP, FNRPM 05-313. Uh, Chip handed out the fact sheets of the issues and acted that the board asked that the board members would contact their congressmen and senators to ask them to send a letter to the chairman of the FCC opposing this action. There were no old business and the next meeting will be on June the 12th at 7 p.m. For the recreation um, committee meeting, we, uh, we met, we discussed um, uh, the Pooch Parade, whether or not it was going to be before in the evening or during the time of the Harvest Fest. That has not been discussed totally, finalized. Um, we also had uh, this discussions about the questionnaire and the results of the questionnaire that we had sent out. Um, we also discussed the uh, next meeting, which would be on um, 6.10 for the Recreation Committee at 9 a.m. And it would be in preparation of the Community Day at the pool at, six, at the 6.29, and the rain date would be 6.30. And for that, I would very uh, especially request the presence of Mr. Lee as the Chef Master. <laughs> what, what were those dates? Uh, so that I can schedule something else. <laughs> <laughs> the community day at the pool is 629, and the rain date is 630. Okay. We have never used the rain date except last year we had to, and that was a really <laughs> good call that we did yeah. for that. Um, but uh, if you can put it on the agenda, actually not to be out of town, <laughs> discuss that with the wife, the family, yeah. the dog, the cat. Uh, yeah. It would be greatly appreciated if you are available. Um, that's at uh, the end of my report. Great. <laughs> Finance and audit, Mr. Drees. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last week we received the January and February finance reports from the uh, finance fiscal officer. I have not had a chance to review them yet. And once I do, we will schedule a finance and audit committee meeting. I have one resolution later. Okay. Safety, Melanie Hermes. Uh, safety committee met today. Um, present were Councilman Berdries and myself, Mayor Moore, and both Chief Flirterman and Chief Spaeth. Um, we talked about the resolutions that will be I'll be introducing in a few minutes, um, which uh, Chief Flirterman already went over during the manager's report. Yes, not during his report. Um, and also, we discussed the uh, Green Hills. Fire Department Easter egg hunt will be Sunday, 421 at 1 p.m. Get there early as it lasts <laughs> about a minute. So um, Sunday, 421 at 1 p.m. for the Easter egg hunt on the commons. And that is all I have until my resolutions get introduced. Can I, can I add something to the um, safety committee report? Sure. You did a good job, though. <laughs> um, I, I often ask our fire chief, um, how are things at the fire department? And um, he's always quite honest. Uh, we are very fortunate to have the professionalism of, of the Green Hills Fire Department. And I usually kind of the uh, unanswered or unasked question that's always answered by him is, is how many people do we have that are active members that respond if there are calls. And we have 38 members right now. And um, those people are all volunteers all the time. None of them get a dime for the hours that they spend 
in training just to be able to make a run, whether it be an um, uh, emergency medical services or a fire run. And um, they all have day jobs and they all have <coughs> other commitments. And um, sometimes during the day, it's tough to get a crew out and we have mutual aid and we, that mutual aid goes both ways. It, we help other municipalities as well as them helping us. And um, so I would, I would ask citizens uh, two things. One, if you've ever considered um, joining the Green Hills Fire Department and serving in that way, um, that would be an excellent thing to, to do. Um, and there's, there are probably some things that you might be able to do for the fire department that have nothing to do with fire ground operations or EMS. Maybe helping do some record keeping or do some accounting or um, do some mechanical things if you're really good repairing equipment. Um, so I, I would consider, I would ask everyone to consider <coughs> what, what could I do to help the Green Hills Fire Department? And then the other thing is, is those 38 people are all volunteers and, and all of us um, like appreciation shown to us. And so if you know somebody that's a volunteer for the fire department, um, just take a few moments and thank them for, for what they do because it's, um, it's an incredible thing that they do. If we ever had to go to a paid fire department, um, it would just be, it, it would be well north of a million dollars for us to have one person on 24 hours a, a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. By the time, you know, you have multiple uh, people filling that, that one person on duty all the time and the, the benefits for them, et cetera. So um, it's a, an incredible value that they provide to us and, and we need to be um, enthusiastic about the appreciation we show for them. That's it. Thank you. Good. Okay. Our governmental affairs, laws and rules, Jack Lee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, laws and rules and governmental affairs met on mon uh, Monday, March 25th with a uh, limited agenda to review information regarding concerns that have recently <coughs> been raised concerning some proposed funding options relative to the Mill Creek Conservancy District. The Conservancy District is a long-standing state of Ohio recognized governmental entity that oversees flood control issues of the Mill Creek watershed. The Conservancy uh, has three appointed trustees that are appointed by a common police judge, and in this case, uh, Judge Lubers. Uh, the, the, the primary concern that was raised was about the possible, and I emphasize possible assessment upon property owners within the watershed. Uh, however, those uh, at, at this time, within those municipalities that are identified are, are those that are originally represented in, in the Conservancy, those being the City of Cincinnati, St. Bernard, Elmwood Place, Arlington Heights, Redding, Evendale, Lachlan, Sharonville, and Sycamore Township. Uh, so at this time, the village of Green Hills is not included in that list of municipalities. However, Green Hills, <coughs> with its proximity to Winton Woods Lake, uh, the lake obviously being a major part of the watershed as far as the west fork of the Mill Creek, could figure into one of the broad fund funding expansion options that were mentioned to be considered. There is nothing specific to address at this time as far as the Conservancy, uh, as it does not have any authority until the U.S. Corps of Engineers finishes the remaining construction of the Mill Creek Channel at some point in 2020 or 21 at the earliest. And that's also subject to federal funding to complete that construction. Um, Ohio Revised Code 5705.05 specifically establishes recognition of a watershed conservancy districts for possible funding under the 10 mill inside millage that's currently supporting both the village and the school district. Rather than an individual taxpayers getting billed it would be an allocation of the current inside millage should, should it include us. And again, I emphasize <coughs> that we are not within the current group of municipalities um, mentioned uh, 
in, a, in recent uh, meetings that would seem like a likely funding vehicle, uh, but this could be a budgetary concern both to the village as well as the school district if it does get expanded. Um, the Laws and Rules and Intergovernmental Affair Committee is not recommending any action at this time. However, we plan to retain this subject as an agenda item and staff, as they have already been doing, is, is attending uh, uh, meetings on this and will continue to participate in those meetings addressing this concern and bring forward any action to council in the future. Um, and then our next tentative scheduled meeting is April 22nd at 9 a.m. That's all I have. Okay. Moving on. New business. Resolution 2019-08-F. <coughs> resolution making supplemental appropriations and transfers. Mr. Greaves. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 2019-8-F. Resolution making supplemental appropriations and transfers, whereas the 2019 annual appropriations that were adopted on December 11th 2018 are to be amended and whereas appropriations must not exceed taxable total available re resources of the village per Ohio revised code section 5705.36A5 therefore an amended certificate of estimated resources has been requested from the county budget commission now therefore be it resolved by the council of the village of Green Hills Ohio section 1 certain actions are needed in the monies appropriated so to permit the village of Green Hills to meet its fiscal obligations for the year 2019 the following items of expenditure are to supplement the appropriations for expenditure for the year 2019 fund general fund uh, Community planning appropriation 35,150 change 72,000 total 107,150 capital funds 4901 appropriation zero change 14,710 dollars and 64 cents total 14,710 dollars and 64 cents section two from the following transfers of funds be made from previously appropriated monies, the general fund to police, 2,901, amount $99,000. From the general fund to the swimming pool, 2,909, amount 85,000. <coughs> Section C three, this resolution shall take effect and be in full force from <coughs> and after the earliest date allowed by law. Mr. Mayor, I move for the adoption of this resolution. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? I think the acting manager already provided commentary. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think he did a good job. He did an excellent job. Right. Okay, clerk, call the roll. Mr. Drees? Aye. Mr. Halter? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Metz? Aye. Ms. Walter? Aye. Okay, resolution 2019-08-F <coughs> passes. Next resolution 2019-09-S, authorizing the municipal manager to e execute the Hamilton County, Ohio Mutual Aid Agreement for law enforcement. Ms. Hermes. Resolution number 2019-09-S, authorizing the municipal manager to execute the Hamilton County, Ohio Mutual Aid Agreement for law enforcement. Whereas the Ohio Revised Code provides that political subdivisions may enter into contracts for the purpose of ob obtaining police <coughs> protection or additional police protection and for the purpose of obtaining additional police through mutual aid agreements. And whereas numerous political subdivisions in Hamilton County intend to provide reciprocal police services across jurisdictional lines to enhance the capabilities of law enforcement for the protection of citizens and property throughout Hamilton County. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Green Hills, Ohio, Section 1, that the municipal manager is hereby authorized to execute a newly revised mutual aid agreement for law enforcement substantially in conformance with the attached hereto as Exhibit A and incorporated herein by reference. Section 2, that this resolution <coughs> shall take effect and be enforced from and after the earliest period allowed by law. Um, I move to adopt this resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? 
Again, right. this was just updating <coughs> the current jurisdictions and adding the tactical response team. Great. Clerk, call the roll. Ms. Walter? Aye. Ms. Metz? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Mr. Halter? Aye. Mr. Dries? Aye. Okay, resolution 2019-09-S passes. Next resolution 2019-10-S, uh, resolution adopting the Greenhouse Mayor's Court Rules, determined. <coughs> resolution number 2019-10-S, resolution adopting the Greenhouse Mayor's Court Rules, whereas the Mayor and Council of the Village of Greenhouse, Ohio, desire to establish Mayor's Court Rules that govern the operations of said court, and whereas the mayor of the village of Green Hills and the duly appointed magistrate have collaborated to promulgate the rules of the court, <coughs> and whereas the municipal manager and members of council's safety committee have had the opportunity to review said rules. Now therefore be it resolved by the council of the village of Green Hills, Ohio, section one, that the council of the village of Green Hills accepts and adopts the mayor's court rules for the village of Green Hills, Ohio, attached here to and incorporated herein by reference. Section two, this resolution shall be in full force and take effect upon its passage. I so move to adopt this resolution. And second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? I, would not <coughs> I just wanted to mention about. that uh, you, meant you call it the safety committee. We need to cross out the traffic part of it. I already did. Okay. Thank and you. I uh, clarified it with mm -hmm. the thank acting you. clerk. <coughs> <laughs> okay, clerk call the roll. Mr. Drees? Aye. Mr. Halter? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Metz? Aye. Ms. Walter? Aye. Okay, resolution 2019-10-S passes. Next resolution, 2019-11-S and S, resolution <coughs> authorizing assessments <coughs> on certain properties in the Village of Green Hills. Ms. Metz? Resolution number 2019-11-SNS, resolution authorizing assessments on certain properties in the Village of Green Hills. Whereas the Village has given proper notice to the owners of certain real property in the Village of Green Hills regarding the removal of vegetation, refuse, garbage, and or debris from the properties listed below. And whereas the owners of said properties did not take action to remedy the violations and therefore the Village of Green Hills contracted to remove vegetation, refuse, garbage, and or debris, and now <coughs> seeks to collect said expenses by authorizing the placement of a lien upon the lands and collected as other taxes. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Green Hills, Ohio, Section 1, that the Village Council hereby certifies that the cost of such labor, together with the expenses relative thereto, be filed on the return and statement to the Hamilton County Commissioners as an assessment against the properties listed and placed as a lien against the properties by the Auditor of Hamilton County, Ohio, as follows. Parcel number 597-0080-0032-00, address of 63 Burley Circle, owner of Williams, comma, Shannon N., at a cost of $320.80. Parcel number 597-0030-0206-00, address of 22 Falcon Lane, owner ZC Homes, LLC, at a cost of $106.80, for a total cost of $427.60. Section two, all amounts collected as a re result of this resolution shall be placed into the general fund of the Village of Green Hills. Section three, this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passage. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt this resolution. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? <coughs> okay. Hearing none, clerk call the roll. Ms. Walter? Aye. Ms. Metz? Aye. <coughs> Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Mr. Halter? Aye. Mr. Drees? Aye. Resolution 2019-11-S and S passes. Next thing is the calendar. Green Hills Fire Department Easter egg hunt. Sunday, 421 at 1 p.m. Uh, Green Hills Shine event, uh, April 19th, 10 a.m. 13th. 13th. <laughs> it says 13 here. I don't know why I said 19th. <laughs> 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 and uh, streets and services meeting April 9th at 9 a.m. That's why I said 19, because there's a <laughs> nine right above it. <laughs> You're trying to get, <laughs> get yeah. people to show up on stage. Uh, 
April 22nd, Monday at 9 a.m., uh, tentatively laws and rules. April the 10th is a Harvest Fest meeting with the, uh, with the staff at 9 a.m. April 9th, else? work session? Yes. At 7. April 9th. Sounds session. right. Yeah, I think it's the 9th. It is the 9th. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'd like to recognize our, our B team uh, stepped up tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Here, here. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's a capital B. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. All right. Nothing else. Meetings adjourned. Good job.